Since 1900, we have seen a dramatic increase in worldwide weather-related disasters. There have now been four times more weather-related disasters in the last 50 years than in the previous 100. We began to work together to move this issue onto the global center stage. There was a lot of discussion about the contribution from uh, buildings and from industrial factories, uh, but I became aware during that same period of time that there was another factor that was going undiscussed, and that is the role of animal agriculture, which I could see was playing some significant role around the planet. But this was the elephant in the room no one wanted to talk about. Whatever environmental issue you want to look at, from you know, species loss to water pollution to water use to climate change, animal agriculture is one of the top causes. The critical widespread negative impact of animal agriculture on our planet is undeniable. Severe global crises from climate change and environmental damage to species extinction, hunger, poverty, disease, and antibiotic resistance all of these have direct connections to animal agriculture and the massive inefficiency of our current food production systems. A report published by WikiLeaks as far back as 2009 exposed the conversations between Nestle executives and U.S. officials called the Tour de Horizon. The Nestle executives said that their own research had shown that the world was set to run out of fresh water within the next 30 years. It stated that one of the greatest reasons for our detour down this catastrophic path is the global demand for meat products. If you look at the, the impact that food choice has on, on global warming, it's very significant. Eating meat is huge for global climate, and that's something where personal choice is the determining factor. So there's the only case I can think of where individual human choice would have a big effect would be uh, food. We're now over the line. And the idea that we're gonna double meat production between now and 2050, this is just unsustainable. This is gonna have to give. Our diet is taking us to an abyss. A significant reason why livestock production has been having such a huge impact on greenhouse gas emissions is because of the large surfaces of forests that have been destroyed in order to make room for pastures and for the uh, growth of soybean and maize uh, for feedstock production. Our forests were once full of the most incredible life. In more recent years, we began to grow an insatiable appetite for meat and dairy. And as our demand for more meat grew, we needed more and more land. So we slashed and burned our way through the pristine forests, destroying everything in our paths to make way for the animals we desired to eat. As these animals weren't allowed to roam free as they naturally do in the wild, their grazing areas soon became empty. And so, of course, we needed to feed them. So again, we slashed and burned our way through more and more forests, sowed the ground with genetically enhanced corn and soya, and then doused it in pesticides, herbicides, and synthetic chemical fertilizer. Animal agriculture has literally changed the face of our planet. The Greenland is used for human crops, a great area that spans the globe. And yet the land we use for animal agriculture, shown in red, now occupies vast amounts of our Earth's land, a far greater area than that used for human crops. Almost all the Earth's surface is now bears the mark of some kind of human impact. And most of that is livestock production. Agriculture has transformed the planet like nothing else. To produce milk, we farm an area about the size of Brazil. To produce beef, we farm an area about the size of Canada, the United States, the whole of Central America, Venezuela, Colombia, and Ecuador combined. To produce eggs, we farm an area the size of Sweden. To produce aquaculture feed, an area about the size of the UK. A plant-based diet would reduce the amount of land required to produce our food by 3.1 billion hectares. That's an area the size of the entire African continent. 
The Amazon is the world's largest tropical rainforest. This ancient and richly biodiverse world is slowly being replaced. It is often assumed that much of the soy being planted in Brazil is for human consumption. In fact, less than 6% of the soy grown across the globe is fed to humans. The vast majority is grown to create animal feed for livestock. The soy is exported all around the world and fed to the billions of chickens, farmed fish, pigs and cows that we eat each day. The forests are not only home to millions of species of wildlife and plants, but are also great regulators of our planet's atmosphere. Day by day, they slowly breathe in the carbon dioxide, whilst producing billions of tons of fresh oxygen for our air. Each year, an estimated 18 million acres of forest are lost, which is roughly the size of the country of Panama. It is thought that about half of the Earth's mature tropical forests have now been destroyed. And some scientists have predicted that unless significant measures are taken on a worldwide basis, by 2030, only 10% of the forests will remain. One of the most precious things we have in the world is our rainforests. The rainforests are literally being uh, chewed away um, by farmers who know they can make money by cutting another acre and then another acre and then another acre for meat. naquele tempo, cacique, então eu já falo, olha, você vai sofrer muito, porque o branco o ruralismo. Each year, hundreds of tribes people indigenous to the Amazon rainforest have their villages burned to the ground. They have been forcibly removed from their land, with many of them murdered by the agribusiness paramilitary who seek to turn their jungle home into farmland for growing soy for livestock feed. One of the worst affected tribes is the Guarani Kiowa in Mato Grosso do Sul. Para nós indígena, antigamente as florestas que é a nossa casa. Quem começou a destruir a nossa aldeia é através da agropecuária. So there was actually a report that came out in 2018 and they found that the world's top five livestock corporations now release more annual greenhouse gas emissions than ExxonMobil, Shell and BP. It is crazy when you think about it because the EU is spending 24 billion pounds of taxpayers' money on livestock farming each year. And this is at a time when we are facing an ecological collapse and we drastically need to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So it's no surprise that people are asking a lot of questions now about the fact that there seems to be some serious conflicts of interest going on here. 
There's some very heavy lobbying going on of government, and I think that happens throughout the world. And it's just a historic thing that needs to be, I think, rebalanced. As I've mentioned to you over the phone, um, I've worked with a number of large livestock companies around the world. Um, so the way it works is that a representative from, or uh, pays us usually up to half a million euros. We then target the relevant uh, politicians from different governments around the world and motions are made to pass legislation in favor of the company's business strategies. For environmental policy, we can be very persuasive in order to abolish or, or, or heavily relax environmental regulations in government so our clients have more freedom in their work. Uh, I mean, the other day we managed to kill proposed legislation that would have had a, a huge impact on the industry based on a report from the UNFAO. You know, the industry is, is just concerned with growth, but the environmental data that's coming out now, it's, it's really making that difficult for them. Today, democracy does not on, always function as well as it should because of the huge influence that uh, agribusiness corporations and livestock producers in particular exercise on decision making. A former director of the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, Dr. Samuel Jatsi, warned as far back as 2010 that interventions by agribusiness lobbyists were blocking reforms that would offer better standards for human health and preserving the environment. Big animal agribusiness corporations and food producers' influence over political decisions about the regulation of their industry has long been a concern for campaigners who see the narrow interests of the industry taking widespread control. If we have any doubt about how powerful this influence is, we can recall that, for example, when the Advisory Committee on Dietary Guidelines in the US made recommendations to the US government as to how dietary guidelines should be shaped, they were blocked by this very powerful lobby of agribusiness interests. In 2013, the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization released a landmark report called Tackling Climate Change Through Livestock. The report states that livestock farming is responsible for more greenhouse gas emissions than all global transportation combined. A growing number of scientists believe that the impact of animal agriculture is, in fact, even worse than stated in the FAO report. There are close ties between the research organisations and governments and government policy and industry. It's very pervasive because livestock industries depend on government policies that support them. The FAO report um, was prepared within the FAO by specialists of agriculture and livestock production, not by specialists of the environmental issues associated with uh, agricultural production. I believe that a more serious concern, of course, is that the International Meat Association was involved in preparing the report, which does raise the question of the independence with which the study was prepared. Government policy in that regard is not for the benefit of the land, it's for the benefit of the industry. In their report, the FAO partnered up with member countries, non-governmental organizations, and many other organizations, including the European Feed Manufacturers Federation, the International Dairy Federation, the International Meat Secretariat, the International Egg Commission, and the International Poultry Council. In an industry worth over a trillion dollars, are these not the very institutions that have the most to lose from a damaging scientific report against livestock farming?